Okay, I'm going to share with you how I built an engine adapter plate to convert my Toyota MR2 over to a 1NZ engine. After blowing up two 1ZZ engines, I'm tired of those. So here's a picture of the 1NZ fresh from the boneyard. This one had 600 miles on it when I got it, and I think I paid $600 for it. So uh, what I discovered once I got this engine is that the bell housing will not bolt up to my transmission. So I decided to make an adapter plate. <clears throat> I started out with a piece of plexiglass from the plastic supply house which had a laser cut hole in the center. I also picked up a drill bit specifically for plexiglass and then I stood the engine on its nose and started to lay out how I was going to do this and the first thing I did was put the plexiglass on there and find a vertical line for the center line of this engine. The next thing that I wanted to do <clears throat> is uh, this crankshaft stuck up out of the back of the engine a little bit so I had to machine a, a recess into the plexiglass and I did that using a rotary cutoff wheel, an air powered rotary cutoff wheel and here it's sitting flush on the back of the motor now that it's got the recess in it and this location pin, dowel pin for the engine I drilled a hole for that. My first hole didn't turn out quite right because my plexiglass drill bit walked across the plexiglass and so I taped over that hole flipped the plexiglass and the next hole that I went to drill I made a real nice indentation and then I use the machinist's centering drill bit to start the hole and then I went to a little bit larger size machinist's centering drill bit then I used the plexiglass drill bit to drill through the hole and I reamed it using a tapered reamer to the finished size which is a, just a very slight press fit over that pin and so I'm on the way to making an adapter plate I've got one dowel pin located then I drew an outline of the transmission, I'm sorry, the uh, engine, on the on the back of the engine I, I drew an outline and, and here you can see the completed engine side of the plexiglass template. So next I have to add it to the transmission and I had my machinist make a centering um, tool which goes over the input shaft of the transmission and that tool locates the plexiglass on the transmission so that it's centered and it also is stepped so that it fits down into the hole which is in the back of the crankshaft on the engine. So here the transmission is set on top of the plexiglass plate and I'm adjusting the clocking to make sure everything clears. Once I chose a clocking that works I outlined in a different color of ink the transmission bell housing and then I located carefully each hole I picked up a piece of 6061 T6 aluminum at the scrapyard and I made a paper template from the plexiglass template using double-sided masking tape I stuck that to the 6061 I cut it out on a on a bandsaw. I used a wood bandsaw with a non or with a non-ferrous metal cutting blade so you can actually cut aluminum on a wood saw with the right blade and that's what I did and uh, here you can see the plexiglass plate uh, I've got the first side of the adapter almost done the transmission side I'll call that the bottom side of the adapter uh, got a couple of tapered allen heads which hold the plate to the transmission and then these studs locate the transmission. There's enough hole around each one of those studs on the transmission that there's some slop and play in there so these holes are not as critical as the dowel pins. The dowel pins are what locate that transmission and those measurements for those holes are highly critical. So that plate is pretty much completed for the lower side and then this is the engine side of the adapter which I'll call the upper side and, and going through the exact same process double sided masking tape on a template and then each hole is cut very carefully one by one and each one is checked as I do each hole 
I would put the transmission back on the engine and, and check the alignment so that each one is perfect. And here, this one has two dowel pins in it. Uh, actually three. There's two in the engine and then there's a third one which comes up into the transmission from the other direction. So I was able to use one of the original dowel pins to align things. The other one is in a new spot. And here the starter is in a different position on the 1NZ engine versus the C6X transmission. So I had to clearance the transmission for the starter drive. And I did that by ejecting the starter drive with a small screwdriver and marking it and then drilling and grinding and cutting and, and until I had a nice little hole that that starter drive would sit down into and allow the starter to come out and, and hit the flywheel. And uh, it's just about done here with that, that uh, clearance hole for the starter nose. All right, there I'm checking it again. And I need to remove a little more material and there is the finished recess for that starter drive to clear. So now I'm ready uh, once I check that starter clearance and I'm ready to actually put the adapter plates in place and set the transmission back on the engine. Here's a picture of the finished plate and this is the finished plate with the studs and pins in it. So it turned out looking really nice. And here's the finished adapter plate installed on the engine, the finished adapter plate installed on the transmission. And I've installed the clutch and flywheel. Now I'm going to put the transmission on under the engine. And I'm going to leave the engine on its nose to do this, which makes it real easy to line things up. And you don't have to worry about hanging a transmission by a clutch when you're doing it this way with the engine vertically. I had to uh, move that tube a little bit, that coolant tube, I had to move by about 10 millimeters to clear the bell housing of the transmission. And a couple more modifications I had to do for this particular engine. The... Uh, the, uh, let's see, where are we here? Okay, I had to cut a little bit off the engine block to clear the mount for the transmission. I had to do a little bit of grinding there. And then I had to modify the starter because in its new location it wouldn't clear the slave cylinder for the clutch. So I ground the nose of the starter a bit and uh, here you can see the clearance between the clutch slave cylinder and the nose of the starter. Uh, you'll see it in a second here. It's a real tight fit. Towards the top of that frame you can see where the slave cylinder fits into the nose of the starter. So uh, there's another shot of that, that clearance. That was, that was real tight. With an automatic transmission that wouldn't be a concern. And then I had to use an Allen head bolt in that hole on the back side uh, just for clearance. I needed a small headed bolt, so there's one Allen head bolt. And I had to make a new actuator for the clutch slave cylinder that was longer to make up for the increased clearance between the engine and the transmission. And I added a little bit of extra length to it because I like to run the, the slave cylinder deep down in the bore and uh, the engine's bolted to the transmission and you can see the adapter plate between the engine and the tranny in this shot so here it's getting ready to go back in the car and this is a car where you drop the car down over the engine the engine comes up from underneath I had to replace one of the axles because there's no hanger bearing on the one NZ motor for that uh, equal length axle shaft. So I had to run a, a long axle out of a 91 Toyota MR2 and I put the ABS brake uh, sensor from the newer axle onto the older axle and it fit right on. And just a few more shots of the engine. Now it's in the car. I had to make a, a new motor mount for the 
passenger side of the car because the engine is shorter than the engine that came out, which means I need a longer motor mount. So I made a template out of cardboard and used some of that leftover 6061. I doubled it up so it's twice as thick. And here's the engine in the car from underneath. You can see that axle. And another shot of the engine from behind the car. And I had to modify the exhaust. So um, here you can see a couple of mandrel bends tacting place for the exhaust. Here's the car. Engine's installed. Just got to put some fluids in it. And it uh, fired up and ran. And using the stock factory ECU. So what I discovered is I had to change injectors to get the best runability out of it. I had to go back to the original injectors that were in the 1ZZ engine. And I put those in the 1NZ and they work great. They're a 260cc injector versus the 1NZ 200cc injector. So uh, there you have it.